Hello everyone, this is Joel, and uh, today I'm going to be showing you uh, all of the new blocks that we've added to Minecraft EDU. And these are blocks uh, that are designed to give uh, level designers, or in, in most cases with Minecraft EDU teachers, the ability to more control the, the play experience of the players or the students as they uh, go through the world. And so let's get started. First, we're going to come over here to this tree where I've placed an information block. And when you right click on it, you get to see a larger uh, amount of text that a teacher can, can put. You can fit a couple paragraphs in here. You can write it in another program, copy paste it, uh, save it. At the moment, it's still a little buggy. The formatting gets messed up, but you can, as you can see, I can kind of fake it and make it look all right. So I'm going to close it. And uh, next you'll notice these uh, checkerboards here. That is actually, I've used it to define the spawn point of the world. This is the spawn block. So whenever whenever a teacher places this, and that, that's where students will enter the, enter the world. And also, if you use the various teleport commands that you have available to you, you'll, uh, you'll go there also. Now, you'll notice I didn't go to that one over there. I went to this one on the floor. Uh, the the reason is that this was the last spawn block that I placed. The game uh, only treats the official spawn point, meaning the entry point to the game, as the last place that you placed a spawn block. So this one's basically just decoration over here. But you can see here, let me get another spawn block out of my inventory. If I were to put it, for example, over here and then say uh, teleport me to spawn, now I go over here. Um, so uh, let's go on. We, uh, we're going to go down these paths here. Now there are fences. Um, now I'm logged in in teacher mode, but if I was in student mode, I would not be able to go through these fences. And it's not the actual fences that are keeping me in, but you'll notice that under the fence, there's this thing which we call a border block. And a border block is to use to define um, used to define the area that the students are allowed to play in. So you could do a big square of border blocks or, or another shape to keep players cont uh, contained into an area. But as you can see in this map, what I've done is I've used it to create a path. Um, so let's go down that path and see what's next. Now we have uh, two very special blocks, the build allow block and the build disallow block. Uh, before I show you that, let me just show you on the uh, teacher menu. If I go into the world menu, I can set whether or not students are allowed to build. Uh, whether students can uh, not only build but also dig and, and break blocks and modify the world. So right now you can see that students are not able to build in this world. However, if I put down build allow blocks, they will still be able to build uh, above that block. So for example, if you were to put those in the ground, they could build a house above it. Um, it's only above, it's not below. So if, for example, you were to put it in the roof of a house, the, build, the students would be able to build on the roof, but not in the interior in the house. Not sure that makes sense, but uh, you play around with it, you can figure it out pretty quickly. And then the reverse is true of the build disallow blocks. If I, if I set the world to students can build, but I want to protect a certain area, uh, maybe, you know, for example, a starting point, a starting building, something like that, or uh, something that has to do with a quest or a lesson that I don't want the students to be able to destroy, I place these build disallow blocks under it, and, uh, and they will not be able to build. Uh, and so you may have also noticed that we've got some funky signs going on here, uh, right? We got uh, big signs. So uh, in Minecraft EDU, when you place a sign, whoops, when you place a sign, it, the game actually gives you a choice of whether you would like a uh, small sign or a big sign. And it uh, kind of stretches it out here, but it, uh, it, looks, it looks fine in the game, as you can see, uh, especially when you put it on the side of a block. Uh, nice big signs where you can put lots of text that uh, uh, you don't have to cram everything into a few short lines. So uh, let's let's go over here, and uh, this is just to uh, give you an example of how those build allow blocks works. In fact, why don't I do this real? Let me uh, let me make it so students can't build, and then I'm actually going to disconnect, and I will uh, reconnect as a student again. I don't know. I'll be uh, this guy. So here, let me show you. Um, uh, so right. So now we're in uh, we're in. Uh, 
build disallow mode. Students can't build. Students can't uh, edit any of these things. And you'll notice even, you see I'm getting pushed back from these fences. Those are those uh, build disallow blocks uh, fencing me in there. So anyway, so I can't build anywhere in the world except where these build allow blocks are. So if we're going to get over this fence, we're going to have to do it right here. So fortunately, I've uh, provided some blocks for myself to use. And there we go. We're over. All right. So we're uh, almost done. There isn't too much more to see. Um, whoops. <laughs> I got caught up on the little corner of the uh, build allow block there. Uh, we're going to go in this building. And I want you to, sh I actually want to show you another feature of the, uh, the information blocks. Um, so as you can see, you right click and uh, uh, as you saw before on that other one on the tree, you get uh, text. But you'll notice now I'm in student mode. So I actually can't uh, edit the text. I can't change it or copy it or save it uh, anymore because I'm in student mode. However, we did want students to have the ability to use info block. So if a teacher gives them an info block and then also puts a build allow block under the info block, uh, the student will be able to edit the sign. Uh, but what I wanted to show you, there's actually one other feature of the build allow blocks, uh, which they can be used uh, sort of to form a gate or to separate areas of the level. Let me show you what I mean. If I walk over these info blocks, the game actually teleports me, it, for, it, it pops open the message in the info block, and it teleports me a little bit away. This is so a teacher can uh, can can set it so a student cannot go back to another area. You know, it forces them to read the instructions for the new area, and then they can't go back. So if I try to go back, you'll see it's pushing me in that direction. And I and I here, let me go back to teacher mode because I want to show you how that works. Whoops. There we go. Uh, so here, let me give myself uh, an information block. So if I pl pl uh, place it in the floor, it's going to teleport me in the direction I'm facing. So here, if I do this, ah, all right. So you see, these were pushing me this way because that's the direction I was facing when I placed the block. So if I want to go back the other way, I can do it here. I can face this way, and now that'll push me over here. Um, all right, well, that's almost done. There is just one more block, special block that we've added to the game that we have to show you. It is the information sign, a very important block, very powerful, very mysterious. It's over here at the end of our little trail on the shores of a great desert. It's the information sign, and I was just kidding. It's actually just decorative. The idea is if you want to make uh, an inf uh, a, a, a sign or an information block or just something very hard to miss, you could uh, put a information, big blue information sign on it, and uh, your students won't be able to miss it. So uh, I think that's basically it. Uh, I've taken you through the demo world. There's uh, a lot more I can show you. There actually is one other block that I could show you. Um, it's this foundation block, and um, but you know what? I am going to wait until my building tutorial to show you what that one does, because uh, it only it's it's really used for construction. Oh, and by the way, speaking of building, I uh, made this entire level entirely using the Minecraft EDU building tools, and it really took me not even two hours. It took me about 15, 20 minutes just to to lay down the the path and the and the signs. Um, and then, you know, I, I spent uh, <laughs> the rest of that time just doing little details and touches and tweaking things. But uh, using the Minecraft EDU building tools, it's just incredibly quick and easy just to lay down sort of a series of areas that, that your students could progress through, um, you know, passing challenges at, at each time. Um, so that's it. I, uh, I hope you come back for the building tutorial, and uh, I will see you soon.